I want to find the true mean weight, sorry, lifespan of a particular brand of battery. So I go out and I test a bunch of them. I test 40 batteries. And I see how long it takes for them to die in, the, in a particular flashlight. I find a mean lifespan of 1,087 hours. A standard deviation of 32 hours. Make a 95% confidence interval for the true mean. You try it. Got it? Good. What's the first step? Right. We got to find the error. Do we know all of those things? Yes. ZC only depends on this. It's 95%, so we're going to make a 95% confidence interval with Z 1.96. Was this? 32. What's N? How many batteries? 40. Work that all out. We get 8.32. I'm going to round to 8 because our original numbers were given in whole numbers. So the mean lifespan is 1,087, give or take 8 hours. Sometimes we express it like this. You might see this formula in your textbook. These are just less than signs. This is true mean. So it says the true mean is between these numbers. What's x bar? sample mean. So this is a pretty easy formula. It says to subtract and add. The true mean is between 1,079 and 1,095 with, and we can make this statement with 
95% confidence. We really are 95% sure. Not 94, not 96, 95% sure. It's good to be sure, and it's good to be sure of how sure you are. Okay, that was fun. Now, I don't know about you, but before I do an experiment, I like to plan ahead. I like to say, decide in advance how many men I should measure, rather than just measuring people until I get tired. If we change our level of confidence, if we raise our level of confidence, we can be more confident about our results, but that makes our results less specific. If we lower our level of confidence, we can get a smaller interval, but there's a bigger risk of missing the mean. So what if I want a nice, narrow, specific range, which is also very reliable? Use a bigger sample size. So, let's say I want to find out how many passengers are on the bus at a particular time of day. Or the train. I believe the standard deviation is 27. I want to use 95% confidence I want an error of no more than two people with 95% confidence. So there's a formula for that. This might look a little bit familiar. It is, in fact, the good old error formula turned upside down. E is the maximum error that you're willing to tolerate. This is still the standard deviation. This is still Z. Let's plug in. times 27 divided by 2 and then square all of it. We get about 700.1. Now, what does this represent? This is the sample size, that is, the number of trains you would have to count to have an estimate this precise. That's pretty big. 700 times I'd have to count the number of people on the train before I could be sure of my estimate to within two people. In fact, 
not 700, for a sample size, you cannot have a fraction as your answer. If you're doing a survey, you can't ask half a person. You can't measure half a man. So we always round up. We will need a sample size of 701 to have results that are as precise as I want. 